we're now going to move into this skill, which is very, very closely related to significant figures. Um, scientific notation. It's the, um, the notation of choice for, surprise, surprise, scientists. Okay? Oh, wow. uh, and the reason why is because in scientific context, which is a huge sort of area for measurements and so on, lots of the numbers that we deal with are either really, really big or really small. Okay? Now, therefore, it makes it awkward to write all of those, those dozens of zeros in order to make a number huge or the dozens of zeros to make a number small. So if you have like an astronomically large number, well, it's fitting because, you know, when you're measuring astronomy, you're like, these distances are mi tens of millions of billions of kilometers or whatever it is, right? When you are astronomically large numbers or microscopically small numbers like the size of an atom or the size of an electron or something like that, okay, it starts to become a little bit awkward because you've got something like, say, um, you know, three million, million, million kilometers, right? It's like, oh, how, how broad is the solar system, okay? Actually, it's much bigger than that. Or you might say, alternatively, you know, 0 0.0000000008 meters, okay? Which is like, oh yeah, the size, the width of the nucleus, or whatever it is, okay? So what we're trying to search for is a more efficient way to write numbers like this, okay? Now the advantage, the sort of tool that we use to, to make this more concise is index notation. So we just need to review that, okay? So make a little sort of subheading here, index notation. Index notation is what makes scientific notation work, okay? So let's recall, if I wrote for you something like, say, 2 cubed, that's an abbreviation. What's an abbreviation for? 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2. I'm multiplying 2 three times, okay? Now, we live in a base 10 system, a decimal system. So every subsequent number is like tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. So rather than like 2 to the power of something, the powers that I'm interested in are powers of 10, because that's tens, hundreds, a thousand. So, as a second example, if I said to you something like 10 to the power of 4, that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 10,000. Yeah? Have I counted my zeros correctly? So you can see 10 to the 4, a much more concise way of writing 10,000. How many zeros did I write? I think I said million, million, million. Yeah? So how many zeros is that? 18. It's um, 6 every time for each million, and there's 3 of them. So that's 18. So how could I write this number? The number of zeros, to get the zeros, is 10 to the 18. That's how many zeros I've got. But then you've actually got the size of the number. Like it's not 10, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's 3, 0, 0, 0. So I'm just going to stick a 3 on the front. Question? Sure. It warmed up. OK, so what I've just written up here, this is the scientific notation for whatever that distance is. Okay? And you can see much more efficient way to do things. It gets a little bit trickier. We'll do a, a third example here. When we want to introduce negative indices, so let's go, let's go five. Okay. Now, negative indices. Maybe I mean this is a while ago that we did this. Okay. So this is about dividing numbers rather than multiplying them. Okay. Um, so we're trying to get at really small numbers rather than really big ones. Okay. Now a um, a rhyme you might have learnt, which is um, to turn this into a positive index. I'm gonna need more space is to cross the line, change the sign. I don't know if you ever learned that. I, oh, yeah. I got taught that when I was in year nine. So you cross the line, you come underneath. This works both ways, by the way. Um, we've gone underneath the fraction, right? So now we're on the denominator. You cross the line, you change the sign. So it's not negative five anymore, it's five. Does that make sense? So what this is, sorry if I run out of space, you can continue going vertically down. This is one over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Does that make sense? Okay, now I asked you to get your calculators out just now. Okay, you can go ahead and you can punch in any of these. You can punch in 10 to the minus 5. You can do 1 divided by. What I'm looking for is a decimal. Can someone give me the decimal for this? 
zero point. <laughs> like that? Okay. So hopefully you can verify this on your calculator. When you're doing this, right, I want you to notice because it's a little bit sneaky, right? How many zeros did I have when I did 10 to the fourth? How many zeros? I had four zeros. One, two, three, four. How many zeros do I have for 10 to the negative five? Five, including this guy over here. Right? So it's kind of nice if you remember, even if you've got a positive or a negative, then the number up here, the power, the index, that's how many zeros you're going to see, assuming you've got whole numbers out the front. Does that make sense? Okay, now, just be careful here, right? How many zeros do you count on this number? 12? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Bingo. Okay? So how will I write this number? If I had a 1 instead of an 8 along the end there, yeah? That's like this number, but just more zeros. You said 12, right? 10 to the negative 12, okay? But in fact, it's not a 1 there, is it? It's an 8, so I'm going to say times 8, okay? Now, this and this, these are simple examples of scientific notation. You could see if I wanted to, well, how many significant figures do I have on both of these numbers? How many do I have? I just have one significant figure in each case, okay? If I wanted more significant figures, one of the things, and you should put this sort of in a, um, an important color, one of the things about scientific notation is that this number out the front, this one that tells you not the size, like how many zeros, but like the actual, the ending or the beginning or whatever, okay? That number, we want it to be between one and 10. Okay? So for instance, you wouldn't write, if I, if I suddenly went somewhere that was 10 times further away, you wouldn't write 30 times 10 to the 18, right? Because that's not between 1 and 10. If I had 30 times 10 to the 18, that 30 is actually 3 times 10. There's another 10 that I can write in there, right? So this, in fact, will be 3 times 10. There are 18 10s hiding in there, and here's one more. So therefore, I'm going to have in total 19 of them. Okay? So you see, this line here, not scientific notation, because the number's not between 1 and 10, right? And it makes comparison harder. This number, this is in scientific notation. Does that make sense? So what if it's like, instead of 8, it's like a 13 or something like Okay, so well, let's, let's just do that, shall we? Okay. Now, um, a way I could do this is to say, all right, well, this is instead of 3 times 10 to the 18, I could say, well, it should be 13 times 10 to the 18. Yeah? Like I've replaced the 3 with a 13. But again, this is not scientific notation because it's not between 1 and 10. So I need to divide this number by something to make it between 1 and 10. I'm going to say it's 1.3 times 10. Do you agree with that? You can verify it in your calculator. If you like, you know how we move the decimal place and so on. There's already that 10 to the 18 that was hanging out the back there. So now again, I've got 18 tens there. I've got one here. In total I have 19 tens. So this, this last line, that's scientific notation. Yes, yes, no, no. Make sense? 